Hi, I'm Yu Mingchen from Tsinghua University. Today, I will introduce our work FlashDoor, an efficient log-structured key-value storage engine for persistent memory. And this is a joint work with my colleagues from Tsinghua University and the Ohio State University. In the past decades, there are a bunch of papers working on the persistent memory, ranging from file systems to index structures and to new programming models. However, most of these works were based on emulation because the real hardware was still inaccessible. They typically emulate persistent memory with the following assumptions. First, persistent memory is assumed to be better addressable, and processors can use load and store instructions to access it at any granularity. In terms of hardware performance, persistent memory is assumed to provide close to DRAM bandwidth, much higher write latency, and very low read latency. In last year, the first persistent memory product, Intel OptiMemory, came to the market, and we find that some of these assumptions are not accurate, and some of them are even wrong. First, despite that OptiMemory can be accessed via load and store instructions, the internal minimum update granularity, which is called XP line, can be as high as 256 bytes. OptiMemory also has much slower write bandwidth. Our measurement showed that the pre deem write bandwidth is only 2.2 GB per second, which is only one-third of that of the RAM. In terms of latency, OptiMemory shows comparable write latency, but delivers much higher read latency. Among these assumptions, the most troublesome one is the better addressability. In the past works, Many of them propose different techniques to reach niceness property, such as fine-grained journaling, fine-grained caching, and fine-grained index structures. And most of them design crash-consistent write vertical by using a series of 8-byte atomic operations. However, all these techniques are doomed to generate a large number of synchronized and small-sized IOs, which can waste the device bandwidth unnecessarily, because Optin has coarser has granularity and low write bandwidth. An intuitive approach to address the aforementioned problem is using a log structure, which always appends updates at the end of the log. In this way, we can buffer multiple updates in a while, and then commit them all together. The idea of log structure is very successful for solid state drives and hard disks, because both of them prefer sequential access pattern and the overhead of high latency when accessing storage devices can be amortized with batching. As a result, a typical storage system can buffer up to tens of megabytes of data before persisting them to the disk. Our question is, can a log structure still retain its benefits when deployed on optimum memory? To answer this question, we measure some basic performance metrics and find that random and sequential access to optimum memory can achieve very close peak throughput. We also find that the minimum I.O. unit, which is 256 bytes, is enough to saturate the optimum bandwidth, giving enough concurrency. So it's not beneficial to batch data larger than this I.O. size. Besides, log structure introduces extra log cleaning overhead, which again makes it hard to estimate the benefits of log structure design. In this paper, we propose FlashDoor, which revitalizes the log structure design in optimum memory. It works as a storage engine for persistent key value stores. The simple insight behind FlashDoor is selective batch. It is used to maximize the potential performance of optimum memory. Specifically, the small sized key value pairs are directly appended to the log structure, since multiple of them can be merged together to create a batch. Large key value pairs instead are stored separately using a persistent allocator because they cannot benefit from batching anyway. We also propose two techniques named compacted log format and pipeline horizontal batching to further improve the batching opportunity while without increasing the latency. Our implemented FlashDoor prototype can support both hash based and tree based index structures and it can achieve up to 35 million operations per second with a single node, which is up to six times faster than existing systems. 
In the following part, I will first briefly introduce optimal memory and then the design details of Flastall and show some results and finally give a summary and a conclusion. Intel optimal memory first arrived in April of last year in multiple types of capacities. Optin is capable of running in two modes. One is memory mode, where applications and operating systems make optimal memory as a catch of DRAM. An existing software can directly use it as a less expensive, slower DRAM. The other mode is the app direct mode, where applications and the operating system see it as a non-volatile memory that can be used for loading and storing data. In this paper, optimal memory is configured in app direct mode to provide persistent data storage. And this is a very high-level description of the internal architecture of optimal memory. As we can see, the 3D S-point physical media access granularity is a quarter kilobytes. As a result, small operations is actually translated into read modify write operations, and this can cause great write amplification. We evaluate the performance of FastFair to investigate the effect of small-sized updates. FastFair is a persistent B plus tree index structure. It is designed to avoid logging and support name blocking reads. To achieve these goals, FastFair uses a bunch of atomic operations in its update protocol. In this figure, we show both the put throughput of FastFair and the raw performance of Optin. The x-axis is the number of threads. And we can observe there is a big performance gap between them and the hardware bandwidth is poorly utilized. A straightforward approach to amortize the overhead of small size updates is using a log structure, since it supports making multiple updates persist altogether. However, our evaluation shows that it's non travel to directly adopt it in optimal memory. As shown in the left figure, we find that random and sequential access achieves almost the same peak throughput. As a result, forming sequential access pattern as in a law structure had very limited benefits. Second, we also measure the hardware bandwidth by changing the I.O. size. As shown in the right figure, we can find that 256 byte I.O. units are enough to saturate the hardware bandwidth. As a result, it's not beneficial to batch more data than a single I.O. unit. Apart from the above aspect, we also find that batching with a log structure increases latency inevitably. In the following part, I will show the design details of Blastall. This is the overall architecture of Blastall. It is designed to maximize the potential performance of optimal memory by better utilizing batching opportunity. In persistent memory, we decouple the storage into two parts, including a per-core log structure and a persistent allocator. The client interacts with the value store through a network. To process a put operation, for example, if this is a small key value item, the data and its metadata are kept directly in the log entry and appended at the end of the log structure. For large key value items, instead, are stored in the persistent allocator since they cannot benefit from batching anyway. So we only store a pointer in the log entry to point to the actual key value data in the allocator. Flasto keeps the index structure directly in DRAM to help with finding a specific key value pair. It can direct using existing index structures, such as B plus tree and hash table. With this decoupled architecture, Flasto can buffer multiple log entries in DRAM and flush them to persist memory altogether with the same overhead as persisting one log entry. The key design part is how to format the log entry so that more log entries can be placed in a single I.O. unit, say 256 bytes. For this purpose, we adopt the operation log technique to describe each operation instead of recording the value directly. As a result, each log entry is designed with its minimum size. For example, for pointer-based log entry, which only store a pointer in the log entry to point to the actual key value data, only contains 16 bytes of data. This indicates that 16 log entries can be placed in a single I.O. unit and flushed to opt memory altogether. However, despite that batching contributes to improved throughput, 
it will also increase the latency inevitably. This is different from Gigabyte Ethernet or Solid State Drives because low latency is one of the major benefits of emerging non-modal time memory and high-speed NICs. Let's read the figure to understand this problem. As shown in the left part, the vertical arrow indicates the timeline. Let's first see processing request without using batching. When a thread creates a new log entry, it can persist it immediately in a round-robin manner. We can find that this approach increases high persistent overhead because it generates a large number of small IOs. A naive approach is receiving multiple requests before processing them. So a thread can create multiple log entries before persisting, and the persistence overhead is amortized between multiple requests. We can find that this approach creates a batch only from its own request, so we call this as vertical batching. It reduced the persistence overhead but incurs high latency. As a result, we propose horizontal batching. The major difference is we allow a thread to, st to steal log entries from other calls when it creates a batch. In this way, the response latency can be reduced because it costs less time to create a batch. However, when the log entries are stolen by others, it has to wait for completion information and a large number of CPU cycles are wasted. So, we propose a pipeline scheduling policy. When a thread is persisting a batch, other threads don't need to wait synchronously. Instead, they can begin processing the following request and wait for the completion information in a pipeline manner. As a result, we can see that the pipeline horizon batching improves throughput while without compromising the latency. By putting all the techniques together, we see how a put operation are processed. To support horizontal batching, we also introduce two extra components, a global lock primitive and a volatile queue for each spread. As shown in the figure, the clients send multiple requests. Some of them contain large values, so they are stored in the allocator. Log entries are also created for each request and are placed in the volatile queue. Then, these threads try to grab the lock. Say, call one grabbed the lock successfully, so it tries to collect log entries from other threads and release the lock. At the moment, other calls can receive new requests. Call one then persists the log entries to its local log, log structure and sends the completion information to other threads. Once log entry has been persisted, each thread will finally update the volatile index. There are also some other design details, such as the design of a lazy persist allocator, grouping the calls to balance the contention and the batching opportunity, and the index recovery. If you are interested, please check our paper. Then we see some experimental results of Flasto and show how it outperforms other systems. Our evaluation platform consists of one server node and 11 client nodes. The server node has four OptiMemory DIMMs with a total capacity of one terabyte. All these nodes are connected with a 100 gigabyte switch. In our paper, we, compare, uh, we compared Flasto with both hash-based and tree-based value stores. In this talk, we will only show the result of tree-based ones. We used both production workloads such as Facebook ETC pool and synthetic benchmarks such as YSSB. Let's first see the result of YSSB benchmark. As shown in the figure, the x-axis is the value size, and the y-axis is the throughput. Here is better. For small values, say 8 bytes, Flasto achieves a throughput that is almost 8 times higher than IP3. This is because in Flasto, multiple small values can be persisted together with, with much lower persistent overhead. Besides, the compared two system place the index structure directly in persist memory. The internal modification operations, such as balance and sort, also incurs much more small writes. For large values, Flasto still shows 1.7 times higher throughput. In this case, the values are stored in the allocator, so only the metadata log entries can be batched. 
Facebook ETC pool is a mixture of small and large capital pairs, which represent the real workload in production environment. Among them, there are 40% of key-value items with sizes smaller than 13 bytes and 55% of items with sizes smaller than 300 bytes. In the figure, the x-axis is the put-get ratio and the y-axis is the throughput. We can observe that they showed almost the same trend as that of YSSB workload. For put-only workload, Flasto outperforms the second best, that is, fast fare, by three times. For read only workload, Flasto still shows one times higher performance, despite that Flasto doesn't optimize for read operations. We also evaluate how pipeline horizontal batching can reduce the latency by comparing with vertical batching with which the threads collect requests locally. In the figure, the x-axis is the throughput, and the y-axis is the medium latency. For a target throughput running at 13 million operations per second, we can find that the horizontal approach reduced the latency by 44%. From another perspective, say, for a target latency of 20 microseconds, horizontal batching improves throughput by 34%. And finally, this is a brief summary and a conclusion. Intel Opt Memory, as the first product came to the market, shows much different hardware properties from what we assumed. And these new features makes many existing optimizations hard to be applied. For example, the fine-grained management caused a huge number of small and synchronous writes. As a result, we propose Flastor to revitalize the log structure design on optimal memory. The key design insight is that we only batch small writes, since neither one cannot benefit from batching anyway. To make Flastor more efficient, we also propose a compacted log format and a pipeline horizontal batching. Our evaluation also shows that Flastor significantly outperforms existing approaches. Thank you very much.